Good morning. I was just commenting, it is such a joy to hear all the chatter, a loud chatter from standing from the back. Uh, welcome everybody to this morning's worship service. I'm glad all of you put your flip-flops away and got your winter coats on, because uh, it is a season that we are in. Uh, please take a minute to review the highlights within the bulletin. Um, please also, I guess, first and foremost, coffee hour. Please come down to coffee hour after the service and fellowship with one another and have some goodies. Also, a couple more things I wanted to point out. The, this coming Friday on the 20th at 6.30 p.m., um, I was told not really to focus on the travel log, but there's a potluck supper, a potluck dinner, food, right, food. It attracts the kids, we know, but there's some potluck uh, dinner and travel log this coming Friday, 6.30, in Fellowship Hall. So please, 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 I think there's a sign-up sheet, or if you forget to sign up, just please show up uh, this coming Friday. And yes, we just got done with the Christmas uh, epiphany season, but Len is going to be around the corner. So for those that are able, there's a Lenten Bible study Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. starting February 22nd. Last but not least, uh, being an accountant, not a tax accountant that I am, but taxes, everyone knows that those are right around the corner too. And Brenda has the tax deduction uh, forms, uh, statements for you, so you can see her and she will have those for you. Okay, there we go. Well, now, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as I read from Psalm 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Stand for the call to worship, please. <clears throat> 
We walk in darkness. We live in a land of deep darkness. We have seen a great light shines upon us. God brings us joy. Pray together the prayer of confession. God of light, we live in the darkness of despair, worried about our lives, concerned for our health, fearful that we are lost from you. The yoke of our burdens lies heavy upon us, our unwillingness to forgive, our fears of one another, our reluctance to share what we have our divisions and quarrels. We long to turn from the dark and live in the light. We yearn to leave what is evil and follow the paths of righteousness. Shine the light of your love upon us and transform us with your love that your promised realm may draw near. Amen. Thank you. 
For those who are able, please stand. God is merciful and slow to anger. God seeks the lost and extends the invitation again and again. God welcomes us when we turn to him. My brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Share Christ's love with one another. be seated. Children, would you please come forward? Good, good, good morning. How is everybody doing today? Not enough sleep, huh? huh? So let's try this one more time. How are we doing this morning? It's a little better. Still, still a lack of sleep. But I wanted to talk to you this morning about, let me find my, uh, okay, well, my paper was left up there, so we're just going to wing it. How's that? What is it like for you if you are sitting in your home and you experience a thunderstorm and the lights go out? It's scary, right? You scream. I do, too. So that's okay. I scream, too. But it's very scary if you're in the dark and you're walking around and you, don't, you can't see anything. Now, in our house, the first thing that we will do is we will go get a candle. And this is not a real one because I'm afraid I would burn myself. Just ask my wife and my family. But this, so what if you are in the middle of a storm and you light a candle? How does that make you feel? If you're, think, think you're in a storm, there's a storm, you're in your house and it's dark, and all of a sudden, one of your family members gets a candle and lights it. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel better, right? First of all, you can see, right? You can see a little bit. You can have some light. And what else does a candle do? It might, if this was real and you put your hand on top of it, not too close, by the way. Right, it makes you warm, right? There's heat that comes from it. So there's a lot of benefits from a candle, right? Especially in the darkness. And I'm gonna leave that on while we talk. In the, the gospel reading today, Jesus says that those who walk in darkness have seen a great light, okay? Now, did God put a candle in the Bible and say that this was a light? Was God talking about a candle? God wasn't talking about a candle, even though it gives off light, right? Do you know what God was talking about when he says, those who walked in darkness have seen a great light? Close, close, angels. It, God was talking about Jesus. When the birth of the baby Jesus came along, now that verse itself 
I'll talk about it in a few minutes, but it actually started in the Old Testament, but Jesus talked about that because the people of Jesus' times were having, they were going through rough times, okay? There were soldiers in their land that were from Rome, and they weren't, you know, Israelites or part Jesus' people, and they were being mean and nasty, and Jesus was assuring people that there is going to be hope. There is going to be light. God's saying, my light, Jesus, is coming into the world, and he's going to give you light and hope and love, okay? So do you think God has put people in your life that are kind of like candles that can help you out along your way and light your path? Who are some people that God has put in your life that can act like candles and show you the way in darkness? Who are people that God's put in your life? Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Who else? Teachers. Teachers. Jesus. Jesus, right. Very good, okay. And the thing that, that God gives us parents and teachers and Jesus, but God also, and I'm going to call on Mr. Martin again because he's my Bible guy to hold up the Bible. Mr. Martin, you're probably not ready, but that's okay. And you, we're going to find a Bible. Anybody got a Bible? Mr. Salamone has a Bible. Mr. Martin, I'll call on you next time. Um, God gives us, doesn't give us a candle, but he gives us Jesus, but he gives us the Bible, right, that can also show us the way kind of like a candle does. So whenever we're lost, if you're physically lost and it's dark, grab a candle, right? But spiritually, if you're lost, talk to someone you love, Read the Bible, and God will show you the way. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for these children. Thank you so much for their presence and their joy. And thank you for their families. And thank you for everybody here in church today, whether they're in person or watching us online. We ask that you be with all of us. And we are going to go through dark periods in our life. But we ask that you continue to shine the light of Jesus in our lives to show us the way no matter how hard of a time we are going through. We love you. We thank you for you and your son, Jesus. And in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Hebrew scripture this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 9, 1 through 4, and that's on page 638 in the Old Testament in your pew Bibles. The righteous reign of the coming king, but there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee in the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Median.
The epistle this morning <clears throat> is from 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 9, and that's found on page 165 and 166 in the New Testament in your pew Bibles. From the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the salutation, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. gospel reading this morning comes from the fourth chapter of Matthew, verses 12 through 23. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat, and their father, and followed Jesus. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I think every Sunday I easily overlook the talents of Joan and her wonderful music, so can we thank her? And if I could play my trumpet, a tenth of a percent of how good Nathaniel plays that keyboard, it would be amazing. So Nathaniel, thank you as well. Well, little Philip was spending the weekend with his grandparents after he had a very long, very difficult week at preschool. And his grandmother decided to take him to the park on a Saturday morning. 
It had been snowing all night, and that morning, everything was so serene. It was so peaceful, so beautiful in the park. And his grandmother commented, doesn't it look like an artist painted this scenery? Did you know, she said to her grandson, that God painted this scene just for us? Yes, Philip replied. God did it, and he did it left-handed. So this confused the grandmother. So she asked Philip, what makes you say that God is left-handed? Well, Philip said, we learned at Sunday school that Jesus sits on God's right hand. (laughs) So if God's left-handed, I must be in good graces because I'm left-handed too, so I don't know. The people who walked or sat in darkness have seen a great light. This is a passage that I referred to earlier that originated in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. Now this might sound familiar as it's often read during the Advent season as a foretelling or prophecy of the birth of a Savior who would come at some point in time and save God's people. But that same passage is also included in Matthew's Gospel today in the fourth chapter. And when it is mentioned in here, it refers to a birth of a Savior, but when this is actually read, Jesus is 30 years old by the time that this is coming in Matthew's Gospel. In fact, as such, he's an adult when this verse is mentioned. Now, to better understand this gospel reading that starts on the 12th verse, it's helpful to look at the prior 11 verses, whereby Jesus is led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness, where he faced and he overcame temptation by the devil. After 40 days, Jesus was famished. Jesus was exhausted by the entire ordeal. And we're told that when the devil left Jesus, angels came and cared for Jesus. And from that experience, Jesus comes out of a period of darkness and temptation filled with the Holy Spirit, only in verse 12 to be thrown into another downward spiral of darkness. You see, when today's reading begins, Jesus is disturbed. Jesus is hurting. He hears that his second cousin, John the Baptist, was arrested and thrown into prison. His beloved relative is in trouble. So Jesus withdraws to a place called Capernaum on the northern edge of the Sea of Galilee. And he knows, again, he is going through another dark time. Jesus needs to excuse himself. He needs to get away. And he recalls the passage of scripture from Isaiah chapter 9, where Isaiah proclaims that the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. And Jesus was well educated with a text in the Old Testament. He knew that passage by Isaiah, and he knew that it was spoken to the Israelites after they went through a very dark period in time, 720 to 700 BCE, when Assyria invaded and conquered the northern part of Israel, which, ironically, is where Jesus went away to. Isaiah spoke about the dawn of a new ruler and a new age, the coming of hope, the coming of light, mostly through a new king, King Hezekiah. So Jesus is remembering these words of hope and applying them to the current crisis that he's facing. He knows the darkness that John is going through. He knows the harshness of the Roman occupation in Jerusalem. And Jesus realizes that God's kingdom is near. After the evil he faced of being tempted, and the evil that is lurking in the world all around him, as evidenced by the foreign occupation and the wrongful imprisonment of his relative, Jesus knows it is time. It is time to begin the ministry. Time to spread the light. Time to spread the good news that the world so sorely needed. So what does Jesus do? He decides not to face it alone. 
he forms a team. He calls his disciples one by one and forms that team to begin his divine mission of bringing God's kingdom, God's light, God's hope to all the earth, which includes teaching, proclaiming the good news, and healing others. So my reaction to this passage, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, is one of hope. It conveys not only hope, but assurance that that hope will be revealed at some point. The process of facing a dark or a difficult time, followed by light and hope, has been played out over and over again throughout the history of God's chosen people. During Moses' time, the Israelites faced darkness via the enslavement in Egypt, followed by light and hope of seeing the promised land. During Jesus' time, the Israelites faced Roman occupation, a very dark time. Again, the arrest of people who did nothing wrong, followed by light and hope of that ministry, the good news being spread. And then the Israelites faced maybe the ultimate form of darkness and the death of Jesus on a cross, followed by the light and hope of Jesus' resurrection. But that same pattern has also played itself out throughout the course of U.S. and world history. Civil war, world wars, wars on foreign soil, cold wars, followed by periods of peace. Our nation experienced segregation, followed by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's civil rights movement, difficult times followed by hope. And even as recent as a year ago, when Russia and Ukraine came into conflict with one another, a dark time that is still ongoing today, but showing maybe some signs of hope and light as the city of Kherson was liberated from Russian occupation a few months ago. We saw the darkness of the brutal death of George Floyd, followed by the hope of many people showing support and equality for each and every single person. So when we hear this passage, people who walk in darkness have seen a great light, and on the other hand, reflect on the current state of this world, where so many still struggle with poverty and racism, where the white supremacist movement seems to be gaining strength, where we are so divided from one another, where innocent civilians, including police officers, are gunned down for no reason, a world where there is so much hate. I would not blame you if you hear this passage and get discouraged, because I get discouraged as well. We begin, now, we begin to doubt the truth of that passage. And it's no wonder that many of us today are also discouraged because we read that passage, but are so deep in the middle of a personal struggle that we find it difficult to see the light and experience God's presence. So how can we, in the midst of discouragement, in the midst of struggle, see the light that this gospel reading proclaims? Well, first of all, the good news is that no matter what we are struggling with, no matter how discouraged we are, we have to know, first and foremost, we are never alone. God's light, Jesus, came into this world to shine that love on each and every single person. Jesus is God's way. Jesus is God's truth. And Jesus is God's light. A light that is bright enough to break through any darkness, any discouragement, or any difficult time that we might be going through. Second of all, I think there are a couple ways that God's light can be strengthened within us. And the first thing we need to do is we need to stay connected to God. Jesus faced temptation in the wilderness, overcame that temptation, and then what did he do? He spent time with angels. He spent time with God after that ordeal. And the result of that is that Jesus was recharged. 
he was forever ready to shine that light upon each and every single person to carry him through difficult times, especially death on a cross. And just as Jesus did, when we can connect with God and we get close to God, that is when we are recharged. And God's light can be strengthened within us and carry us through our difficult times as well. But I don't know about you, sometimes no matter how much you may try to connect with God and read the Bible and talk to other believers, no matter how much you pray, no matter how supercharged your light may be, you just can't see it. The situation that you are in is probably drowning out every ounce of light that's trying to shine through. As people of God, we are called to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. But we're also called to love our neighbors as ourselves and love our neighbors as God loves us. And that is the second way that we can strengthen God's light within us. When we connect with other people, when we reach out and show compassion to others, not just people we know, but everybody, when we reach out and show compassion for others, we are taking that light from God that is shining on us and reflecting or redirecting that light around the difficult situation situation that someone else is facing. Not only are we helping them to see the light, but it is at the same time strengthening the light within us. We are all going to encounter these walls and situations in our lives that are going to attempt and may even be successful at blocking out God's light in our lives. We will have those times where we won't even feel God's presence. But how can we still see God's light? How can we strengthen that presence in our lives? Again, we can be a mirror. Even in the midst of our own difficulties, we can feel God's presence even more when we reflect God's light on to someone else going through a difficult time. What got me through my mom passing at the age of 53 was doing something good for someone else. That darkness seemed to be overcoming my life, but I was not going to let that win. I was going to be a mirror and reflect God's light onto someone else who was also going through a difficult time. Jesus tells us in Matthew's Gospel that we are the light of the world. If people can't see the light, be the light. Be the light for them. God's word tells us not to hide our light under a bowl, but to put a light on a stand for everybody to see. When we can help others see the light, love and hope that God provides, that's going to strengthen that same light, hope, and love within us to help us through any difficult time that we're going to face. Through the birth of Christ, God tells us, I love you. Receive my love. Receive my hope. Receive my light. And God says, now I ask you to go and be a mirror for me to reflect my love, give my hope, and be my light to everyone around you in need. Amen. Please stand.
Would you please be seated? And would you please join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, we come to you now in a time of coldness and a time of darkness, both physically because of the season of the year that we are in, but also spiritually. We are looking for warmth and light. There are those whose homes are physically cold. There are those whose lives are spiritually chilly. We know that we can help warm people's homes. We know that you can warm people's lives. Please work through us to share your love, your hope, and your light to others to help them warm their lives. We pray that there will be no more gloom for those who are in anguish. We pray that you lift away people's burdens. We pray that you remove all oppression, all racism, remove all hate from people's lives. We pray for justice, safety, and equality for all people. We pray that you give courage to those who fear. We ask you to bring healing to those who are ill and comfort them and their families. Please bring your presence and peace to those who are mourning. Help all of those to know that they are not, never alone. We pray that everlasting peace will be a reality and that you can and will make that happen. We pray for all of those in military and all first responders. We pray for all of those, anybody serving others and putting their lives on the line for peace and the well-being of humanity. Bless all of those people, for they are the true heroes our world so desperately needs. We thank you, God, for you. We thank you for your Son. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you for the blessings you have put into our lives, even when it is hard for us to see them. God, your light calls us forth to follow you and to serve you. Your light still shines for all to see in this world. May we continue to reflect your light in our lives, in our service, in our words, and in our deeds. Now, during this time of silence, God, we lift up to you our thoughts and our concerns that are weighing heavy on our hearts and minds. And now together, we pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God most high. And let us thank God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your image, for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary, and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection. In the beloved community of your church, we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. Hear us now, O God, as we sing our praises to you. of sacrifice and victory. Remember the night when Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room for the Passover meal, where Jesus took the bread, <coughs> blessed and broke the bread, and passed it among his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken for you. And Jesus also took a cup gave thanks and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. All are welcome to receive the bread and the cup after receiving the bread on the outer aisles, please consume that, symbolizing your individual relationship with God, and then proceed to the center where you'll be given a sealed cup of juice. There are a few unsealed cups available if you would like them. Please wait to drink together. We will do that when everybody is back at their seats, symbolizing our communal relationship with God. And if you would like gluten-free crackers, that option is on the center table as well. Let us break bread together. Thank you. 
This is the blood of Christ shed for us all. Let us drink together. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. O oh God, you call us together. You nurture us with your word and spirit. You fill us up with the presence of Christ so that we may be your people in the world. Now we offer ourselves to you. Bless us as we leave this place, but not your presence. Help us to spread your light, spread your love, spread your hope, and to serve you faithfully in the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you're able, please stand. the joy and serve others. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 